Growing up, um, you know, I saw my parents struggle, the language barrier, um, and just like getting accustomed to a new culture, new language. When Laura Lero was eight years old, her family made Nashville home. As a DACA recipient, she was able to get a degree in social work. But until recently, she was not able to apply for a license to actually practice. I did thought about it, um, maybe moving to a different state. But at the same time, like it has been hard because my family is here. Tennessee recently joined about 15 other states in passing new legislation expanding access to some professional licenses. I think I expect to see more of this happening, actually. I think we've seen it sort of quietly bubble up in different states. And like I said, Eric Figueroa with the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities says during the pandemic, more states realized there were a lot of people of different statuses with in demand skills. And while immigration issues are usually divisive, expanding the workforce has largely had bipartisan support. You will be held to the same standard if you're an immigrant applying for that same license, and that goes across the board. More than two million college-educated immigrants and refugees are unemployed or underemployed. Nearly half have at least a bachelor's degree, according to Upwardly Global, an organization that helps skilled immigrants get into the professional workforce. States stand to gain economic benefits from increased income, spending, and tax revenues from better paying jobs. It sort of is a win-win for everyone. He says the next step is allowing licensed professionals to take their skills across state lines. Thank you for joining us this week for our conversation about immigration. Next week, we are taking on a very hot topic, and that's guns. Many communities are trying to find the answer to gun violence. We are going to one city, taking many approaches to find what's working. Until then, from Seattle, I'm Chris Stewart, and this is The Race.